Hello everyone, welcome to Art in Design. My name is Thorker and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the difference between Photoshop on iPad and Photoshop on PC or Mac. Photoshop has been the default choice for industry professionals for a long time. Not just the most powerful photo editing tool out there, but arguably one of the most difficult ones to master. The interface can be quite daunting for new users and the tool sets are numerous. This is a result of Photoshop's versatility and legacy, with its initial release dating back over 30 years at this point. This is exactly where Photoshop on iPad fits into the picture. While its release date dates back less than two years at this point, it is already a very capable tool. Let's get one thing straight. The iPad version of Photoshop does lack a lot of the features that the PC version has had for years. Features like layer styles, filters, 3D editing, the warp tool, vector support, advanced brush features, and the list goes on and on. On the surface, it almost sounds like an inferior copy of the high-end product that has shaped the graphic design industry for decades. After all, the iPad version is still called Photoshop, and that's a big name to live up to. Where Photoshop and iPad lacks in features, it makes up for in other areas such as responsiveness, performance, and interaction design. Since the iPad doesn't come with a supplied keyboard, the designers at Adobe have had to rethink how to perform many of the actions that a user needs to perform. One of the most significant changes is the absence of the familiar interface with buttons and drop-down menus everywhere. The heavy reliance on finger gestures, tapping and swiping makes the iPad version look and feel like a very different product. However, the boundary between Photoshop and iPad and PC blurs a little bit when you connect a drawing monitor to the PC, like the Artisol D16 Pro that I have on my table right here. Now, we'll talk about this a little bit later in the video, but with a drawing monitor connected, you can now start drawing on the screen with pressure and tilt support, just like you can on the iPad. And what's even better is that with a drawing tablet like this, you can access two physical hotkeys and a scroll wheel that you can bind whatever action you like to. The pencil itself even has two buttons that you can also configure. And on top of all that, you can compose 3D layers and do all the things that the iPad version simply can't do. So <laughs> that must be it, right? A nail in the coffin for Photoshop and iPad. How can it possibly compete with that? Well, the truth is the iPad version was never meant to compete as a substitute to the big and powerful desktop version. But instead, it works in tandem with it in a number of ways. Number one, it has less features, so it's easier for new users to learn how to use. Number two, the features that it does have are designed from the ground up for ease of use for tablet users. Now this serves as a stepping stone for new users to learn how to use the basic functionality of Photoshop without encountering the huge learning curve that the PC version has had with decades of legacy functionality. Number three, the portability of the iPad makes it ideal to get some work done pretty much everywhere. However, one can argue with a nice drawing monitor and a laptop, you can achieve a similar, albeit not the same level of mobility. Number four, you can literally save a document on your personal computer and sit down in a nice couch, launch Photoshop on iPad and continue on with the artwork. It's a seamless transition. You can save on one device and continue on the other. And that supports the point that these two versions are meant to work together. Now the PC version of Photoshop does require a lot of fine tuning to work with a drawing monitor. On the one hand, having the ability to configure everything is great for industry professionals who like to spend the time meticulously making sure that everything is configured correctly and optimized for their workflow. However, that means that you need to be prepared to spend some time to bind all of these actions that you plan to use for the buttons that make sense to you. Another thing to consider is that the iPad is made for touch, while the PC has been adapted for use with a drawing monitor. This becomes especially apparent when the tool that you click on opens up on your other monitor. So you have to sort of look over there, uh, drag it over to the drawing tablet and then continue working. An easy fix for this is to switch to a single display mode whenever you start drawing. 
And that seems to be more or less the story with using Photoshop on PC with a drawing monitor. You need to set up a few things, but once you have everything set up, you now have an incredibly powerful workstation. Now, if you've made it this far into the video and you're not a subscriber of the channel, then I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, make a lot of art and design related videos on this channel. And in the future, there's gonna be some really cool stuff coming out that uh, I can't wait to share with you. But for those who are interested in learning about what tablet I'm using, uh, the Artisol D16 Pro. This is a tablet that Artisol sent to me. I used to have a 13 inch XP pen drawing monitor and it was good, really good. But I like the Artisol better. It's a bigger display. I like the colors. I like the pencil. There are less cables. For me, it does everything that I need a drawing monitor to do. Now, one thing I have to mention is that you can turn your iPad into a drawing display by connecting it to a computer. Now, I'm not gonna dive too much into detail about this in this video, but if you'd like to see a separate video about it, then do let me know in the comments down below. But in short, you can turn it into a drawing monitor by using an app called AstroPad. However, obviously you'll be giving up having physical shortcut buttons and you'll be limited to the size and aspect ratio of your iPad, which is not the typical display monitor aspect ratio. Everything uh, looks a little bit weird and you have to fit the window, but you know, you can work around this. But to summarize, the iPad is not here to replace the desktop version, but it serves as a nice and versatile companion. But let me know in the comments down below, what are your thoughts about Photoshop on PC and iPad? Have you tried them both out? I'd love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments. And as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching. This is me signing off. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you like the video. You can also check out my other videos. They can be found on the channel page. Other than that, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.